الوجود من العدم وجاعل النور من الظلم ومخرج الصبر من الألم وملق التوبة على الندم فنشكره على المصائب كما نشكره على النعم ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الأكرم ذو الشرف الأشم والنور الأتم والكتاب المحكم خير ولد آدم الذي بشر به عيسى ابن مريم ودعا لبعثته إبراهيم عليه السلام حين يرفع قواعد بيت الله المحرم فنصلي ونسلم ونبارك على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم All praise is due to Allah the most gracious the most merciful and peace and blessings be upon his last and final messenger He who Allah guides will never be misguided and he who Allah misguides will never be guided We begin today's khutbah with a story The story begins with Hussein ibn Ali radiallahu anhu he was standing in the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the wali of the Medina, the person that was in charge of the Medina at the time had oppressed Sayyidina al-Hussain. Sayyidina Hussain stood in the masjid and he says if you do not give me back my right لَحْلِفَنَّ بِحِلْفِ الْفُضُولِ I will call for حِلْفِ الْفُضُولِ And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud no, Abdullah ibn Zubayr radiallahu an, he stood up in the mimb- he stood up right away. And he says, إِذَا حَلِفَ بِحِلْفِ الْفُضُولِ لَقَتَلْنَاكَ بِسْيُوفِنَا Is if he calls for حِلْفِ الْفُضُولِ, if you have taken his rights, and he says, I want my rights, I demand my rights back. We promise you that we will stand together and we will fight against your oppression. Why am I saying this story today? It is oppression happening all around the world, but there's a specific situation that is happening right now as we speak. And it's the annexation of Palestine. For those of us that are unaware of what's going on, the Israeli government is trying to take over parts of the West Bank and to expand their illegal settlements. And we as Muslims have an obligation, not just because they are Muslim, but because it is their obligation to stop oppression all over the world. Every last one of us has a responsibility, no matter how young, no matter how old. And this is something that is commanded to us by our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, مَنْ رَأَى أَحَدُكُمْ مُنْكَرًا فَيُوَيِّرُهُ بِيَدِهِ Whoever of you sees an oppression, a wrongdoing, change it with their hands. But this religion is holistic. It understands that we are not going to be able to change everything right away. So he gives us a second option. He says, فَمَنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعَ فَبِلِسَانِهِ Whoever is not capable to change things with their hands right away, change it with your tongue. Go, where, where are we in writing our, our mayor, our MPs, our petitions? Where are we in signing and finding out what's going on? And he gives us a third option for those of us that can't even do that. He says, فَمَنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِقَلْبِهِ وَهَذَا أَضْعَفُ الْإِيمَانِ And whoever is not capable to even do things with their tongue, to change it with their hearts, to say, I reject what's going on. And that is the weakest of iman. But every single one of us has an opportunity to do something. And it starts off twofold. And there's two things that I want us to take away from this khutbah today. The first and foremost is to learn about our religion. To learn about the prophetic way of stopping oppression wherever we see it. To have this love that the Sahaba had. To see if someone was being oppressed against, that we, they're not, they don't stand for it. Today we see oppression happening all over the world and it's become a buzzword. It's become something that we see in the news and we start to ignore. But every one of us has an opportunity and it's very simple. There's simple things that you can do. First and foremost, it's with your money. And when I say with your money, I don't mean to donate. Yes, if you can, that will be great. But what you should be doing is being conscious of what you purchase. So many a times I see Muslims supporting not just, not just non-supporting organizations, but organizations that are built on illegal settlements. The simplest of examples. Sabra, the homeless organization. 
They are built on top of an illegal settlement. Yet so many of us go and buy their products. So many of us support their decisions by supporting them with our wealth. We as Muslims have an opportunity and an obligation to stop that. To be conscious of everything that we buy. To be conscious of everything that we do. Number two, to learn about our history, to learn about our, our culture. So many of our youth, and there's so many youth today, we have, they've given up who they are and where they came from. They've given up any sense of culture. The only thing that they have, they have left is their name. And even that, many of them have given that up. To change their name from Muhammad to Mo, to change their name here and there so that they can't be seen as Muslims or as Arabs or as Desi or anywhere else. They have gotten rid of who they are because they're not proud of it anymore. And that is a failure on us as parents. That is a failure as us as leaders in the community. We haven't shown them the value of their culture, the value of their religion, the value of why you want to be proud to be where you are from. And this is something that we have to ingrain first in ourselves and then in our children so that they can be just as proud and so that they see, when they see oppression, they realize it's my obligation. Not just something that I should do because it's social norm. Not something I should do because it's the new buzzword in town. But something that I should do because I have an obligation as a Muslim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِن بَغَتْ إِحْدَاهُمَا عَلَى الْأُخْرَى فَقَاتِلُ الَّتِي تُبْغِي حَتَّى تُفِيُوا إِلَىٰ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, if one group is oppressing another group, fight the group that is oppressing until it comes back to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah it's a command. If you are able to, go do your part. So what can we do right now? What is going to be our obligation starting today? First and foremost, First and foremost, to understand what's going on in the Palestinian world today. To understand what's happening and why is it happening at such a rate. Why is the West Bank being annexed right now? That's our first obligation. Our second obligation is to be conscious about everything that we do. To realize there's ways that I can support through my vote, through my letters to my MP or to my mayor to what I spend my money on. And number three, I'm going to teach my children about their heritage, about where they came from. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be upstanding Muslims. O oh Allah, forgive us for everything that we have done. We begin this khutbah talking about hilf al-fudul and the obligation that we as Muslims have to stop oppression wherever we see it. Now there's a famous individual in the 19th century that made a very profound statement. He said, he who stands for nothing falls for anything. And for those of us that don't know who that is, that was Malcolm X. He believes the one that has nothing to stand for, that has no values, will follow anyone that leads them anywhere. And the sad reality is that many of us have become like sheep. Many of us have become just following whatever trend is in the media today. And worst of all, we don't even understand why we are following it many a times. And the reason I'm highlighting this today, because even in this, during this difficult time, the leaders of many of the organizations that are fighting against this annexation are local, are local Palestinians that are oppressed in and of themselves, or the Jewish people that are in Israel. 
But the Muslim world at large hasn't even spoken about this yet. We as Muslims haven't started speaking about this yet. We as Muslims haven't started speaking about what happened and why we lost Palestine. A, place of, a piece of land that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about in the Quran. A piece of land that is the third most important masjid for every single one of us. That every single one of us should have an aspiration one day to go and pray there. And for many of our youth, even for many of us as adults, we have no intimacy to this land. We have no love for this land. And this is something that saddens me in particular. Because the Sahaba knew the value of this land to the point, a beautiful story on just a one second tangent. When the Prophet وسلم, passed away, Sayyidina Bilal swore that he would never make Adhan again. Because of how sad he was. How hurt he was. He, he used to make Adhan for the Prophet And the one exception, the Sahaba pressured Sayyidina Bilal to make Adhan one more time in his life. And this one time was when the Muslims conquered the house of Masjid al-Aqsa in Palestine. And that was the one other time that Sayyidina Bilal made Adhan. Because the Sahaba knew the value of Palestine and of Masjid al-Aqsa in particular. Yet for some strange reason, we don't teach our children that. For some strange reason, we don't learn about that. So what's our homework for this week? And I want every khutbah to come out of it having something tangible that we can take. Having something important that we can use and we can hold ourselves accountable. The first and foremost thing is to teach our children this dignity that Muslims must have to stand for oppression wherever it is, whether it's locally or internationally. Number two, we're going to teach our children starting today why we are proud of where we came from. Why we are proud of our language, of our culture. Yes, there's many aspects of culture that are wrong and we should put those aside. But there's many things about culture that are beautiful. Starting first and foremost with language. And for those of us that speak the language, try to get your children to speak the language at home. Help them and give them, and, and give them a prize if they do. Because that will let them keep it, inshallah. And number three, we will be conscious with every dollar that we spend. We will look for opportunities. If there's an organization that is on an illegal settlement or is doing something that is blatantly wrong, we won't support them with our money. Your money, your dollar that you spend is your vote. You're telling them that what they're doing is okay. Better yet, you're telling them what they're doing is right when you support them with your wealth. So moving forward, we're going to be conscious with every dollar that we spend. Seeing which organizations you want to support and which organizations you don't. And that goes even for our youth. Hold your parents accountable. Many of us youth can look at the internet so quickly, we're able to pull out our phones so quickly. So go do some research when your parents buy anything. And say, hey mom, hey dad, what you're buying is, is, is not supporting the Muslim cause. It's actually against what we as Muslims believe in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to stand for justice. Allahumma mahdina fi man hadayt. Wa aafina fi man aafayt. Wa tawallana fi man tawallayt. Allahumma mahdina wa ahdi bina wa ja'alna sababa li man ihtada. Allahumma mahdina wa ahdi bina wa ja'alna sababa li man ihtada. عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينعى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واستغفروه يغفر لكم وأقم الصلاة